Hey, what's up? People Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about 2016's Under the Shadow. Now, this is partially going to be a review of the movie as well as a review of this new Second Sight Films limited edition Blu-ray release. And I first saw Under the Shadow a couple of years ago. I spoke about it briefly on this channel because it was such a breath of fresh air from the kinds of movies that were inundating theaters at the time. I'm talking about movies like The Conjuring, Insidious, Sinister, and all of the multiple facsimiles thereof. Movies that take place entirely inside of a house, there are bumps in the night and jump scares aplenty. And even though Under the Shadow has a similar setup, there's a lot more going on in this film than just your run-of-the-mill haunted house movie with a jump scare every three to five minutes. Under the Shadow takes place in Tehran in the late 80s at the tail end of the Iran-Iraq War, a time in which Iran and Iraq were basically just lobbing missiles at each other, and the shadow that the characters in this film live under, namely Shada and her young daughter Dorsa, is the constant fear of at any moment a missile could come through the roof of their home, blowing them into the sweet hereafter. Soon the two of them are living under another shadow when young Dorsa becomes increasingly more and more ill. She begins seeing people and speaking to people who may or may not be there. Her mother begins to question her sanity. Eventually, the mother begins to question her own sanity. Has living under the constant fear of aforementioned missile blowing them into smithereens driven them both to insanity? Or is there something more malevolent afoot here? Now, one of the many things that I really appreciated about Under the Shadow is the amount of time this film takes to establish the time and place that this movie takes place during. I also really appreciated the amount of time that this movie spent with establishing the characters. Under the Shadow really takes an old school approach to this kind of material, more of the approach of a film like The Changeling than the approach of a film like, I don't know, The Conjuring, Sinister, <laughs> uh, Insidious, you name it. You really get a sense of who these characters are and of the relationship between the mother and daughter, the at times very strained relationship between the mother and daughter. You also get a feel for the kind of oppression that females living in the Middle East, at least at that time, had to endure. And I have to applaud this film for the lack of jump scares herein. Now, there are a couple of jump scares sprinkled throughout, but the placement of the jump scares is almost as important as the jump scare itself. And even though I'd seen this film before, there was one jump scare I'd completely forgotten about, and it got me. Now, I've not had a jump scare get me <laughs> in years and years and years. This movie also does not have a soundtrack. There's no composed music for this film. So the music doesn't cue you into, oh, there's a jump scare coming because the soundtrack just dropped out of the movie. And in a lot of the modern haunted house movies, the biggest part of the jump scare is the loud eardrum splitting stinger that, that erupts on the soundtrack. And it's not so much the scare that makes you jump as it is that big stinger that makes you jump and deafens you for minutes thereafter. Under the Shadow also does an excellent job of establishing, I wouldn't call it suspense, it's more so anxiety. This movie just made me feel very anxious throughout because the characters in this film are in a constant state of anxiety. The characters in this film just look and act completely exhausted. And that comes through because by the end of this movie, and I love the ending of this movie because it's not a, it's not a, a down ending, it's not an up ending, it's just an ending. But by the end of this film, I felt exhausted, but in a good way, because the characters in this film are exhausted because they are under the constant fear of the warning siren going off and them having to grab their family and run down to their bomb shelter or run down to their basement and wait out a bombing and just 
hope that the bomb doesn't land on them. So this movie takes all of the overly familiar and completely worn out haunted house movie conventions and eschews them for a far more subtle character driven and intelligent approach to the haunted house movie. This is an exceptionally well-written and well-made film. This was writer-director Bob Beck on Bari's feature film debut. The performances are fantastic, particularly from the lead, uh, Narjez Rashidi. I'm sure I butchered that name. I apologize, but her performance is absolutely phenomenal. She carries this movie on her shoulders and just delivers a great, great performance. My compliments to Miss uh, Rashidi. I cannot recommend Under the Shadow enough. If you've not seen the film, go check out Under the Shadow. This Blu-ray release from Second Sight Films would be a great way to introduce yourself to the film. If you're a fan of Under the Shadow, you definitely want to look into picking up this limited edition and Blu-ray release from Second Sight Films and add it to your collection. As far as the presentation is concerned, we've got some very nice artwork on the cover of the box. Some very moody artwork. Yeah, I like that. Here is the spine. Here is the back of the release, or the flap that uh, comes attached to the release. That features the a synopsis, the list of special features, the limited edition contents, which as you can see there, this release is limited. Uh, to 2000. Uh, we get a rigid slipcase featuring new artwork by Christopher Shy, soft cover book with new essays by John Telson and Daniel Bird, plus behind the scenes photos and concept illustrations, and a poster featuring the new artwork. Down here, you can see that this is an all region release, regions A, B, and C, which means that this release should play on pretty much. Any Blu-ray player anywhere in the world, which is a very nice touch. Under the flap, we have that artwork. The box that everything comes inside is fairly rigid. It's made of some fairly thick cardboard, so it should be able to take a bump and withstand being uh, pulled out of and pushed into uh, uh, your collection. So there shouldn't be much wear and tear there. Uh, as you can see, my box did take a little bit of a bump uh, in route to me, uh, but um, yeah, it didn't, you know, it took a licking and kept on ticking. So yeah, not bad. Here is the Blu-ray case. We've got the same artwork that's on the box. Black case, which is a nice touch. The back of the release. The sleeve is not reversible, by the way. And there is the disc. Here is the included booklet. Fairly thick booklet. And as you can see there, we've got some full color images from the film. Here are all of the contents, including the uh, essays about Under the Shadow. And we've got some nice behind the scenes images as well. Yeah, very nice. And here is the included poster featuring the newly commissioned artwork. Very nice. This is also printed on some fairly thick paper, which is nice touch. Overall, the presentation for the Second Sight Films Limited Edition Blu-ray release for Under the Shadow is very nice. Everything comes inside this rigid cardboard box. We get the booklet, the poster, and the Blu-ray release itself. As far as picture quality and sound quality are concerned, the back of the Blu-ray does not indicate any kind of elaborate restoration or transfer for the film. However, I thought the movie looked absolutely fantastic on this release. I would give the picture quality a solid four or even four and a half out of five. Same with the audio quality. The sound design in this film is so important because there is no score. And the sound design for this film was brilliant, I thought, and the audio quality for this film was also excellent. I would give it a solid four and a half out of five. As far as extras are concerned, 
First up, we get Exploring the Shadow, an interview with writer-director Bobak Anvari. It's 23 minutes and 53 seconds in length. Mr. Anvari discusses being born during the Iran-Iraq War and talking with his family members about the war as research for Under the Shadow. He discusses the films and filmmakers that inspired Under the Shadow. He discusses the djinn and how the djinn were the boogeymen of his childhood and how cathartic it was to put his own childhood fears into under the shadow uh, he discusses casting shooting the film in jordan instead of iran and why the sound design and the editing process mr anvari discusses the film's premiere at sundance the positive feedback and accolades under the shadow received uh, his fondest memories from making the film and more very nice interview with Mr. Anbari. Next up, we get Within the Shadow, an interview with actress Narjis Rashidi. It's 12 minutes and 52 seconds in length. Uh, Ms. Rashidi discusses growing up in Germany and getting bitten by the acting bug at an early age. She discusses meeting Babak Anvari for the first time via Skype, uh, loving the screenplay for Under the Shadow and getting cast in the lead. She discusses working with Babak, her young co-star, Avin Manchidi, and more. Next up, we get Forming the Shadow, an interview with producers Luke and Toe and Oliver Roskill at 16 minutes and 11 seconds in length. Both discuss both discuss seeing Bobak's short film Two and Two and loving the script for Under the Shadow. They discuss financing the film and the obstacles that presented shooting the film in Jordan and the obstacles of shooting on a very tight budget, a limited schedule, and with limited resources. They discuss the film's premiere at Sundance, how well the film was received and more. Next up, we get Shaping the Shadow, an interview with director of photography Kit Frazier. It's 13 minutes and 29 seconds in length. Mr. Frazier discusses the many conversations he had with Bob Ekonvari about the film over the years, long before there was ever a screenplay. He discusses the visual motifs, uh, the atmosphere, and the sound design for Under the Shadow. He discusses his favorite scenes in the film and more. Next up, we get Two by Two, director Bobek Anvari's BAFTA-winning short film. It's 8 minutes and 48 seconds in length, and it is pretty good. Uh, we also get an audio commentary with Bobek Anvari and journalist Jamie Graham. I listened to about 40 minutes uh, of the audio commentary. Very informative, very entertaining commentary for Under the Shadow, at least for the 40 or so minutes that I listened to. This is a very, very nice limited edition Blu-ray release for Under the Shadow from the fine folks over at Second Side Films. If you've not seen Under the Shadow, this release would be a great way to introduce yourself to the film. If you are a fan of Under the Shadow, you definitely want to look in to picking up this release from Second Side Films and adding it to your collection. I'll post a link to Second Side Films' website down in the description. Go over and check them out. If you've seen Under the Shadow, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck a Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, B Movie Mike, Robbie Sobel, Turi Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Craig Farrand, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Simon Clark, Stone Gasman, Zachary Barton, Lorne Dixon, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Pete Toll, Cal McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Andrew McDonald, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Gonzalez, The R-Rated Show, Fear Fuel, Jason Brattenback, Brandon Bisdick, Stake Sauce, Mark Striano, Jeff Gardner, The Obsolutionist, Chris Earls, Kevin Fitzpatrick, Randall Beatty, Joseph Hinkle, Hey Isn't That Devon Graham, Christian Hanna Horror, HorrorBreakdown.com, Jeanette Spivak, Orc145626, W.E. Bora, Jeffrey Hill, Dave Vanderhoff, Nene and Jesse, Captain Halloween, Brad Frazier, and Mark Lopez. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.